we are going to continue. We've been talking about uh, what? Who wants to be the answer? You have to what? You have to leave to go. Awesome. You left your house to get here, right? You know, so we have to understand that direction requires us going. And if you're going to get where God wants you to be, you're going to have to leave to go. It's amazing how many people try to hold on, though. You ever said things like, you know, I'm afraid to do this, I don't want to do this, whatever, you know, and you have all these great visions and dreams, but how many know a year goes by pretty fast and another year, another year, and you're in the same spot. Not you, though, right? You're the people of God, you got stuff to get done. Well, our series is starting out of Genesis chapter 12, verse number one. The Lord had said to Abraham, I use the word Abraham because Abram, his name was changed later. Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to what? The land I will show you. Why is that? Because I'll make you into a great nation and I will bless you. Understand this, where God leads you is your blessing. Where God leads you is where your destiny, your fulfillment's at. Abraham was to be blessed if he followed where God said to go. Your blessing is where God tells you to go. And so Abraham had a, had a destiny. And to get there, he had to, he had to leave. And when you're talking about this, as review again, he had to leave three things. What are they? Number one was his country. And I said, that's his boundaries. That's where you're, you feel safe in the boundaries and outside the boundary, you're, you feel unsettled in a sense that you, it's a little bit unsettling. I mean, you know, when you step into new territory, you've got to be willing to go there, right? And a lot of times we, we try to play it safe and stay where we feel comfortable, but your future is not in your past. It's not even in your present. It's where you're headed. Did you know that? Come on, help me out now. It's where you're headed. And you know, if you ask a lot of people where they're headed, they can't even answer you. They're just like, well, I'm headed to the ball game Friday night or something. But where, where are you headed, though? Where are you headed? So he had to leave his country. And number two, he had to leave his people or his culture, how you live life. And then thirdly, I believe, is the most difficult, your family. Not that you actually have to leave your family, but you'll have to understand your family has defined your perception of who you are and your possibilities. And so a lot of times you're going to find dysfunction and you're going to find that you feel limited or you were raised with limitations or you were told you had limitations. And the bottom line is you've got to follow God. Okay, amen to that? Amen. You have to make a decision to get uncomfortable and follow God. So Genesis chapter 11, we find that Terah, this is Abraham's dad, verse 31, took his son Abraham, his grandson Lot, his daughter-in-law Sarah, and they set out from Ur the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. To go where? Canaan. To go to Canaan. And the next word is what? But. Help me out. But. but, have you ever used that word? I really would like to do that, but I don't know how. I'd really like to do that, but yeah, I don't have the money. I'd really like to do that. I wish I could do that. And then there's the word again. In this case, they came to Haran, another city. This town of Haran was on the exact same trading route that Ur of the Chaldeans was. And so it's very familiar to them. And the Bible says they did what there? They settled there. How many know you're not going anywhere when you settle? Come on now. You settle, you're done. You know, you sit down, you stop. And you stop moving. You stop moving. Vision always demands action. And if you settle, you let go of where you're headed. So they settled. We understand, we can understand a little bit how they settled it. Ur the Chaldeans was 600 miles from Haran, and that's by camel. So obviously they're tired. But Haran had the same worship experience. They worshiped the moon god. It was a very prosperous city, just exactly like Ur the Chaldeans. So they're tired. They stop. And, but now they have a perspective of the cost it took to get there. You know what I'm saying? You ever started out like that? Kind of ambitious and adventurous, and you get in the middle of the adventure, and all of a sudden you realize, this wasn't as fun as I thought it'd be. Going 600 miles by camel may have been like that, especially when you realize between Haran and, and Canaan was 700 more miles. It's like, well, let's just stay here. 
I can understand some of that. The word settled in the dictionary means this. It means resolve or reach an agreement about an argument or problem. So they settled, they resolved to stay there. They made a decision to stay there. Say the word decision. They made a decision to stay there. But they reached the wrong decision, friend. They reached the wrong decision. They've taken their eyes off of what God had led them to. In fact, if we read the first sentence of Genesis chapter 12, it says, the Lord had said to Abram, past tense. So I'm not sure if Abram heard God and decided to go and Terah, his dad, decided to go and Lot decided to go. But Abraham heard God and he said, We're going to, we need to go to Canaan. And they got there and then his family ties and his dad and they just settled. But Terah died. The Bible says Terah died. That's all it says. Terah went there and he died. Let me ask you a question. What do you want to have on your tombstone? The day you die or what you did? That's all it says about Terah. He died, but the whole Bible talks about Abraham continually. We still talk about Abraham. He followed God. He did what God said to do. So I want to talk today about being settled or how to avoid being settled because your life depends on it. Your destiny depends on it. And there's some markers you need to understand that God will help you get there. And so number one, I want you to write these three, three points down. There's more I may cover next week. But number one, probably the most important, if not, it is the most important. What did God say? Abraham, go where God shows you, right? Where God shows you. What did God say? What did God say? And when you settle, you forget what God said. You get caught up in the circumstances and pressure, and you begin to kind of take your eyes off of the goal and well, it's not so bad here, you know, and just kind of, you began to compromise. What did God say? What did God say? You know, I told you last week about several uh, years ago, a couple years, I don't know, three or four years ago, the angel, God sent an angel to my bedroom and had these three words. Remember I said, he, the angel said, you have a mission. I was kind of shocked by that. I knew I had a mission. Why would God send an angel to remind me that I have a mission? Was I lax? Was I missing the mark? Well, I'll talk about that. But there was a reason why he did. We need to understand that you have a mission as well. I said, you have a mission as well. You're not here just to hold up space. You have a, you have a purpose. Now, you may not know it yet, and that's fine, because you advance in your character and you advance daily. God leads you with glimpses and dreams and visions until a day comes when it all makes sense and he gives you that decision to step into your vision, your destiny. So I knew I had a mission. Of course, I was called to preach at age 19. I'll talk about that here in a minute. But I knew what he was talking about. The angel wasn't talking about me call, my calling to preach and pastor. He was call, uh, talking to me about the time that God spoke to me in Albania. In Albania, I had, and of course, this is review for many of you, but I had what, like Paul did on the road to Damascus. I had a life-changing experience with the Lord. And if you don't know much about Albania, I'll get to that. But I want to tell you, you know, I never like to travel. Maybe you're that way. Most Ohioans don't travel much, you know. But I didn't want to travel, especially overseas. One day flying to Atlanta in a plane, God spoke to me, I'm going to start calling you out to travel. I got off the jet and someone met me there at the airport and invited me to go to Haiti. Well, okay. If he hadn't have said that, I probably wouldn't have gone but I went to Haiti. It was quite, quite an eye-opening experience, trust me. This was before the earthquake, but it was a different environment completely and uh, an amazing journey. But when I came home then, a missionary friend of mine who was a missionary in Albania asked me if I'd come and preach and teach finances in Albania. Now, Albania, if you don't know this, Albania is probably the only nation, I think it is the only nation on the planet that had in its constitution there is no God. I mean, there is no religion. There's no Muslims, no Jews, no Christians. Illegal to have any reference to God in any form or fashion for 40 years. And so you can imagine, they closed the walls off. They had government farms. It was a disaster. You can imagine how prosperous that nation was. <laughs> it, yeah, right. It wasn't prosperous at all. 
But the country had opened, and my friend knew I taught on finances, and he'd been working with some of these people there, and he said, you've got to come because they need to know what you know about the kingdom and about finances. I said, sure. He said, one thing you need to know, you need to pay your own way there and pay their way there. He said, I'm, in, you know, I'm having a conference in the capital city, but these pastors and Christians can't come because they have no money. He said, you need to pay their way there. I said, fine, I'll do that. So I had in my heart, I knew this was kind of different. I didn't know what to expect in Albania, but I knew that I would need more than one session. And my friend said, I'll give you three sessions. But in my heart, I really desired five. I really felt if I could have five sessions, because I didn't know these people, they know nothing. And I knew to help them get this whole concept, I would need a little more time than just one session, you know. And so he said, you'll have three. So I got to Albania. I got off the plane. He met me at the airport. He said, there's been a change. He said, one of the speakers canceled. Can you do five sessions? I said, yes. I knew that I was on track then. All right, Lord, let's do this. Five sessions. All right. Now, if you've never traveled to a nation that's been atheistic or communist, you need to do it. I could not believe it. The first night that I taught... All I can explain to you is it, it looked like I was talking to walking dead people. You know, no, no expression, no, no emotion. Their faces are totally blank. I mean, I've never seen that kind of a, a look on a person. Not only one, but everywhere you looked on the streets, people had this dull, lifeless look about them. And so when I taught the first night, they kind of sat there and kind of listened. I told some of my stories. And... I think I saw a smile. Maybe I did. The next night I began to teach and smiles began to pop up and they began to get a little more excited. The third night they were definitely a lot more excited. They were, you know, kind of, kind of saying yes. And they were, I could tell because their only hope of a future was to leave Albania. Their hope was to go to Spain or Italy for a job. There was nothing in Albania for those young people. Nothing. There were no jobs there. And they were believing to get out of there. But now all of a sudden, they began to see a picture of the kingdom on the inside of them that could create their future. Wait a minute, maybe I don't have to leave. I could, I could be part of the answer here. I could, I could create wealth here. I could create jobs here. They began to have that concept, and they got excited about it. The fourth night was amazing, and after the fourth night, the Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to take an offering. Now, the offering wasn't for me. And I said, God, you know I paid my way and paid their way. I mean, they don't, you know, why would I take an offering? He said, listen, they need to release their faith in what they've been hearing all week. So I went to the missionary and I said, listen, this is what God said. He goes, well, take the offering then. So the fifth night, we set four ladies up front with baskets. We took the offering at the end of the service and all heaven broke loose. I mean, it was amazing. These four ladies couldn't stand up by the power of the Holy Spirit. They began to shake and weep. They had to put people behind them to hold them up as, as they took the offering. The people were going nuts. They were going shouting and dancing and twirling and yelling and screaming. And they were so excited. The anointing of God was tangible. It was the most amazing. The missionary friends said, I've never seen something like that ever. And I hadn't either. I just suggest to you that there's adventures everywhere. You know, it's, it's amazing to me as a pastor, I've asked my congregation many times, have you been here in the United States? You know, have you been to Teton National Park? Have you been to Yellowstone? And it's still surprising, you know, maybe a church of 3,000 people there, and I ask, out of 3,000 people, I have maybe 20 people, maybe 30 people say they've been there. And to me, that is so sad because I know if they'll just see it, if they'll just step out, there's such such a great journey ahead of them, but they've got to see it. They just got to step out. And I believe God has the same thing for you. I know in our life, there are many times I did not want to move forward. I felt like I'm not capable. I don't know how. I think I still, I just feel safe. Just me just stay here. But really I knew my destiny was not where I was. It's where I was going. And I had to, by faith, believe God. I had to step out by faith. And every single time God met me there and it became the greatest stories, the greatest memories, the greatest demonstration of God's power. It became our life to see God show up. And I believe it's exactly what God wants to see in your life. If you'll just trust him, 
if you'll just raise your eyes and let him show you something you've not seen, just let him give you his vision for your future. And then by faith, just step into it. You may not know how. You may have never done it before, probably haven't, and probably never saw yourself in that position before. But if you'll step out, you're going to find the greatest adventure, I believe, that you can have on this planet. You know, movies are great. We can watch people in movies do great things. But I always say, get in the movie. Get in the game. Don't just be a bystander. Let the adventures of life satisfy your longing, because it will. And God will show up, and it'll be a great, great story. So again, you got to leave to go. And let me recommend it. It's awesome. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.